I'm Harry Lund, I'm Chief Executive of the Devon Wildlife Trust. This is a critically important historic moment for the conservation of our marine wildlife. We're used to conserving wildlife on land, and there are many nature reserves here in Devon or el elsewhere across the United Kingdom. But believe it or not, hardly any of our marine wildlife at all is protected. Now the government is currently consulting on 30 or perhaps 31 sites which might be protected uh, for their marine wildlife. This is a great start, but it's nowhere near enough. I spoke to the television presenter and marine biologist Monty Halls about what he felt was important about the marine wildlife and what he felt we needed to do to protect it. So Monty, what's really special to you about the marine environment here in Britain? It's magic the marine environment we have here and we should never forget that we're a lump of rock moored in the northwest Atlantic we're surrounded by very cold water when you get cold water it's very nutrient rich and you have very vibrant marine systems so we've got bustling reefs we've got big animals that come and visit us on migratory routes we've got extraordinary bird life um, just generally we've got 4,000 species that rely on the intertidal zone in our coastal regions so it's, it's a magic magic place our marine environment in terms of the actual environment uh, in its entirety, the level of protection we have is almost non-existent. It's criminal. Uh, there can't be many other advanced nations in the world that have less protected coastal waters than we do. And there can't be many nations in the world that utilise those waters so much. So something has to happen about that. And uh, happily, we're getting a level of protection coming in. But this is just the first stage of the process. It's crucial that this process continues and we continue to look at uh, further areas to be designated and how we can protect the environment as a whole by creating a network of marine protected areas. And are there any particular areas that you know well that you're concerned about at the moment through that lack of protection? I think there's a number of habitats around the coast of the UK that are vulnerable and they're vulnerable either because they're used very heavily, they're vulnerable because of their location, or they're vulnerable because the species within them uh, are very delicate and very susceptible to environmental changes or changes that we impose on that environment. So right the way around the UK, this magical 2,300 miles of, of coastline that we have, there's a number of places that desperately need protection. And everyone's agreed on that. The scientists, the administrators, the fishermen, the people making the policies, everyone is agreed on that. One of the great myths is it means it's a no-take zone. It means you can't do anything in there anymore. You can't take a recreational boat in there, you can't go fishing, you can't do anything. And that's not true. All a marine protected area means is that uh, activities within that area are monitored. So, for example, fishing can still take place in the vast majority of marine protected areas. But the more destructive methods of fishing, things like trawling, uh, things like beam trawling, bottom trawling, they can't take place in, in those areas, for example, but static gear can still be deployed. It's a very important point to note that there is a difference between a marine protected area, a marine conservation zone, and a no-take zone. And in a place like Dartmouth Harbour, but just behind us here, which unfortunately isn't going to be protected, uh, what would you hope to achieve or to see in a few years' time were it to be properly protected? What I'd hope to see in Dartmouth Harbour, which is right behind me, uh, in a few years' time, were it protected. For a start, I'd hope to see a bustling fishing industry, local fishing industry. Again, it's been shown throughout the world that when you create a network of uh, marine protected areas, it benefits the fishing industry in the long term. So that's the first thing I'd hope to see. We're very proud of our fishing fleet here in Dartmouth and uh, creating areas where only static gear activity can take place, creating areas, things like lobster refuges, uh, that have a spill-out effect on the rest of the fishing grounds, I would hope would have a positive impact on the fishing fleet here. But I'd also hope to see a real increase in species diversity, the number of different animals we'd see here, and species biomass as well, the number of animals as a whole. And of course the one species I think that would really benefit from establishing a, marine, a level of marine protection in the dark estuary would be us, would be man. Uh, because hopefully we'd be seeing a lot more things, the fishermen's catches would increase, and we as people would be able to enjoy this body of water knowing it's protected, knowing the water's clean and it's got a healthy, vibrant ecosystem. So Monty, when we're thinking about how to protect, which sites to protect, what are the most important things to bear in mind? 
the key thing to bear in mind when we're talking about marine protected areas is the big picture. Uh, the way these areas have been designated is as a network and that's a really crucial word in all this, the network. It has to be interlinking these sites. One of the problems with the way the areas have been designated or proposed to be designated at the moment is you've got 30 sites that are a long way apart. You need that interconnectivity. And again, studies have shown throughout the world, not studies, real living examples have shown that that interconnectivity between these protected areas works and reaps huge reward for the system as a whole. If you believe, like I do, that it's important to take action to protect our marine wildlife, then now is the time for action. We have a window of about six weeks to persuade the government to protect these sites and to commit to protecting more. So please go onto the Devon Wildlife Trust website and find out the actions you can take. You could write to your local MP and tell them how important you think this is. You could write to the Fisheries Minister, Richard Bailey, or you could become a friend of a marine conservation zone. And the more people we have who are stating clearly in writing that they feel this is important, the more likely it is that the government will listen. Thank you.